Hi friends, so I'm back with my new video and in today's session we'll be learning that how we can create an integration with Redis database and to understand more about Redis uh, in previous sessions we actually started with the MySQL DB which is a relational database second we actually moved to the NoSQL DB which is Mongo and this is the third type of DB which is actually kind of caching solution that is all the data which is stored by is stored in in memory so that uh, we can solve some of the problem moving to next slide to understand that what are the kind of problem it is solving first is it serves the high dps definitely if once is getting served in within short period of time then yes it can serve the high dps second is high performance low latency definitely if you are storing all the data in in memory then definitely you are able to retrieve that information very fast and you can serve to the customer and uh, there is very low latency because of the data is being kept in memory third is reduce the load on the back all the information which is being uh, fetched from the database it actually required a lot of uh, memory because first we need to create a thread then we need to head the backend database and the backend database will process the whole information and it will get back with the required information whereas in memory what we do is we don't need to wait for so long because the data is already there in inside the memory and it gets served within a fraction of seconds and to architecture the whole design in a better way then only we'll be able to solve these kind of problem because it is very likely possible that just because you want all the information within short period of time and because of that you put everything in the cache then your purpose will defeat because if there is a huge amount of data then definitely the performance will be compromised so it is very important that only the most relevant and critical information should be kept in cache the rest of the things can be I, I would say kept on the back end and then it, it can be served as and when needed. Now second uh, problem which we feel can also be solved that say for example if you have a lot of component you have a lot of downstream system from where you are actually fetching the data. Now uh, many times it happened that many of the organization they have some data which is more of like a static in nature that uh, which means that it don't actually change very frequently sometimes it get changed in a week or in a year or in a month then in that case it is always suggested to keep a cache copy so that you don't have to hit the downstream for every single request so what best you can do is you hit the downstream you got the data you keep it in cache so that if any further requests are coming you can serve from the cache and then once and you can definitely define the ttl and other information ttl is something that uh, you define the life of the data let's say for example if i define the ttl is 24 hours then after 24 hours the data will be cleaned up right and this kind of ttl is being defined considering the business use case say for example if some, any information is there which you feel that at least it will, it will not change in a week then you can define the TTL as one week so that it should continue serving the data from the cache itself and after a week it will be deleted fresh data will be loaded on your cache so all these kind of problems uh, you can solve and uh, and let's understand from the uh, kind of uh, pictorial view so this is how the integration would look like after implementing a cache so say for example if you have so many applications and you are uh, requesting for similar kind of data very frequently then what you can do is your backend layer if you are following the kind of microservice architecture then in that case what you can do is in your backend instead of calling the database or instead of calling the downstream api you can keep that data in your reddish cache and then whenever uh, some request is coming from the application or from the UI you hit your cache and get the data and serve to the front end and now the thing is that we'll be solving this whole problem in six different stuff first is that 
will be creating the redis uh, account in, in account in redis cloud and uh, which is available free of cost and the best part is that all these good products they are coming with a coming up with this cloud based solution and they are a free subscription also free tier with the some very basic in basic configuration so that for r and d related thing you can actually create the account you can do the r and d you can check that whether the use case you are able to achieve with this redis or not so similar way i have created account in redis cloud and i have created a free tier database now second thing is you can create the index that is uh, you can create the database third is that you need to in install the redis inside to run the query whatever the data you have pushed on the cloud database with the help of redis inside you can retrieve that data and you can see that whether the data is correctly getting pushed or not kind of and fourth step would be we'll be writing the code and fifth step would be we'll be building and doing the test so let's go to redis cloud so this is how the console look like so let's go back to one step before okay so on on the center you will see there are two things first is redis enterprise cloud and second is redis enterprise software so what you can do is you can uh, install the redis inside from this uh, redis enterprise software option so on a download section you will see that all the list of uh, application or software which are available for different versions you can download it from here and once you have downloaded you have installed then what next you can do is you can go to redis enterprise so friends again creating a cloud solution will not take much time it's just that you have to provide your email id and you will get get a email from the redis team you need to activate the enterprise subscription and you can create the database so now this redis team is actually providing the two different views of console this is the old older view of the console in case you want to go to the new version of the console you can switch from the option available on the right side so this is how the new console look like on the left of left side you have list of options like you can see the list of database you have created you can manage the access control you can do the access management like creating what which all people can access your cloud account and what would be the kind of role they'll be having you can view the access logs and these are the rest of other settings which you can definitely explore now moving here i actually created the database with the name kodi uh, it is mentioning here so if we go inside this database these are the list of information which are available so the very first thing important thing i would say is the database name that is tech kodi i have created this is the public endpoint which we'll be using for two purposes one is to integrate my application with the google cloud so that whatever the records i'm inserting in the redis cloud it can through second is that we'll be using the same endpoint to uh, basically log into redis inside so that i can kind of perform the queries and see whether the data is getting uploaded correct correctly or not and these are the list of some of the information like how much memory is used durability high availability and other things uh now coming back to the security now this is actually the password through which you can connect with the redis cloud so what the combination you need to provide is you need to provide the endpoint with this password then only uh, system will allow you to access now other things which i would say important is that you need to make sure that uh, in your service log this entry should be visible I expect the connection from any ip so there is no restriction uh, now coming back to the redis inside so this is how my redis inside look like once you will install it will run on the local host and this is the browser so definitely you need to provide the connection and uh, let's understand so so definitely once you will install you will get this kind of interface what you need to do is you need to click on this add button 
connect to redis database connect to redis cloud connect to redis enterprise cluster so connect to database so you need to provide the complete url here the port name of the database user id password once you will add this you will get the entry like this now click here and you will get the detail the stats like you will see that how many how much memory you have created how many connections are created how many connection received and other things so two things we have completed that is first we created the account on google redis cloud so we understood this whole structure second is we actually understand that how we can install the redis insight and then how we can add my google uh, redis cloud account in this insight so these two things are done now for this integration purpose redis team has actually uh, provided that this is the package we golang package we can use for the integration and in 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 the bottom they actually have mentioned the whole integration flows so well they have mentioned that what all command you have to execute to install this package and to quick start they have provided the sample code also now let's copy this sample code and see that what all things we can do so i have copied now here i have actually opened the visual studio code i have created a separate directory for redis cache cache based connection now here we would be doing the coding to create establish the connection with redis cloud so the very first thing would be we need to define the package name and then paste so what all things we have got is this uh, uh, we are getting error so there is some issue with my vs code sometime it is behaving a bit abrupt way so uh, what we can do is go get just to make sure that the package which we would be using has been installed or not i already installed it but just for the demonstration purpose i executed the command again uh now thing is that we have got all these things now we need to change the name of this function to main uh now here they have mentioned the address and the password so definitely we are using the cloud so we need to put the endpoint which we actually saw on the redis cloud so we'll go here we'll go inside the database and this is the endpoint which we need to use so i have copied this and paste it here now second thing is database uh, sorry the password so password is available here on the security section so i have copied this as well i have pasted here so this part is done the rest of the things will keep as it is set value and this 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 let's make a slight change first to understand that whether the uh, information which we added that is the address and the password with, with the help of these two are we able to connect with the cloud or not so to do that let's do a ping to the database with the help of these things so, so we can say pong err that is error handling and then dot and then dot result done and then fmt dot print ln so let's print the value of pong or error Now let's understand the whether we are able to ping the database or not. So we have got two commands. Now let's execute go run main. So 
So guys, uh, in response, we have got Pong, which means we are successfully, uh, we, we have pinged the database. Now, the next thing is that let's the dummy message, which we can publish on the uh, Redis cloud. So to do that, uh, we can use the previous message, which we actually published on the cloud uh, Mongo. So this struct we can copy and then we actually can paste here itself. It's just that we need to remove this one thing which is very specific to MongoDB. Second thing which we can copy is this dummy message which we will be publishing and we can paste it here itself. So what we would be doing is that we'll be considering this as a message which we need to insert in database. Now what we need to do is we need to marshal this so that we can uh, push this data as a JSON response. So what we can do is JSON error handling and then we need to put the this inside. So now uh, we actually we are actually marshalling this payload and then what next is we need to do the error handling so error now coming to next part that is uh, create the, the connection we already created we will be using that connection which we created here and we'll be passing on this payload on the cloud. So to do that, let's understand the error. Now, next thing is, and then we can define any key if we want to provide. it. So say for example, ID 1001, then the payload, which we have defined here, which we have actually marshaled here. Now, next is we need to put zero. Now let's see that whether we are able to push this payload on Redis Cloud or not. So let's run this code again. So what they are saying is can't use rdb dot dot error. Now let's see if we are able to. Okay. So now there was a slight uh, change that after that we need to define the error as well we need to call this function so that if there are any error it can be captured and post that we are able to successfully publish the message on the cloud now let's go back to the redis insight and see that whether we are able we have published the data successfully or not so guys this id 1001 is created which we actually defined here and on click let's see yes so on click we have got this data which we actually published so our integration is working absolutely fine and we are able to publish the data so friends if you if you have any query please put it on a comment section so that i can get back to you with the solution in case you feel that i should cover any other specific point in a more detailed way then please mention on the comment and if you like my video please click on the like button subscribe to my channel